Hello students, this tutorial is going to cover uh, the four things that are very important for variety and that's the law of independent assortment, the law of segregation, crossing over and the fourth one which is fertilization. So some students had uh, some difficulty with this and I hope this tutorial clears things up. Let's take a look here at the, the process of meiosis which is the more complicated one. I mean once you know mitosis it's easier to understand meiosis but Meiosis has more cell divisions. Let's take a look here. You obviously know this is interphase. The DNA is there. It's, uh, it's in chromatin form, so it's expanded a little bit. Uh, and then when you start prophase, this is actually when you begin uh, meiosis, obviously part one, you're going to see that the chromosomes from mom and dad pair up. These are the homologous chromosomes, again, from the same size. So you see these two different pairs. Uh, they're starting to pair up, and they start touching each other, and... Uh, it's known as crossing over. So we're going to talk about that one. That's the first most important step that causes variation. So remember that. And the DNA exchanges from mom and dad, so you get different characteristics that are shuffled. So that's why every sperm that's made by a male or every egg that's made by a female will never be identical. It will be unique because of all this magical shuffling that takes place. Here's the next part. This is a law of ind independent assortment occurs here. And it's the idea that, that whatever these chromosomes do, or whatever these genes do, um, is independent. It has nothing to do with these over here. What do I mean then? So uh, look at this. Look how they lined up in the middle in metaphase. You have the red, the one from mom is on the, that side, and the one from dad is on this side. And then the one from dad is on the opposite side, vice versa. So here the idea is that these chromosomes lined up randomly. Um, you know what it could have been instead of the red over here these two could have been flipped around and you would have both mom on this side and both of dads on this side so you can have a lot of combinations now this is just four chromosomes so imagine you know you have 46 and think about the complexity of all that all that shuffling how they line up and so I'll show you a little bit uh, a better image of this process but that's a lot of independent assortment they, they line up randomly and we don't know which chromosomes go on which side and then the, the third step is this whole idea that these chromosomes from mom and dad, they were paired up. And now they leave each other. So it's kind of sad. They say goodbye to each other. Uh, the one from mom and dad separate. And so they go to a different cell. Now this kind of answers that question that students have is, um, you know, why did I get some traits from my dad and from some other from my mom? And why is it that I got the eye color from my dad, but my sister got the eye color from mom? And all these different... Uh, shuffling questions of, of how we get these varieties in our in, in us and this kind of addresses it it's just that well we don't know how those chromosomes and those genes lightened up and then they got separated and so you don't know what you're gonna get you don't know what the sperm is gonna be and what the egg is gonna be and and so that's the whole magic of life so let's take a look closer so again crossing over law of segregation no just kidding uh, crossing over, law of independent assortment, and then the law of segregation. Let's look at it a little bit closely. Um, so if you take a look here, you have your crossing over. Again, this is in prophase right away. Mom and dad, homologous pairs, they touch at the chia chiasma, uh, chiasmata sometimes it's called, and it's where they cross over. And then you see the result is, take a look, you'll see a piece of mom's on dad's chromosome, vice versa, piece of dad's on... Um, mom's chromosome so and then the resulting uh, you have four gametes four sex cells that are completely different okay let's look at law of independent assortment the second part the second thing that creates varieties uh, so again let's see let's look at this example here let's pretend that that we're talking about alien genes and you know we're talking about the skin color gene uh, big G is uh, means green skin and little g means orange skin so here's the gene and remember we talked about alleles, that you have a gene, but then you have different versions of the gene, right? They're called alleles. So skin color gene has two alleles, green and orange. Uh, same thing, eye color gene has yellow um, eye color and red eye color. So let's take a look at, at this closely. So here's this is what the law of independent means. It's that in this case, this is how they lined up, okay? They lined up with uh, the homologous pairs uh, for these chromosomes, which are carrying the skin color gene. And then these 
chromosomes carrying the iColor gene lined up this way. Uh, looks, let's pretend that blue is from dad, yellow is from mom. Uh, so in this way, you have one of dad's here, dad's information for skin color gene, and um, mom's information for eye color, eye color is right here. And so when they segregate, let's take a look at what we have. You see how the genes are separating you're going to end up with these types of cells. Now that's one way they could have lined up and that's one way you can get these combinations. Here's another way. Let's take a look here. Instead, you can see that that instead dad's chromosome is over here. It's on this side. So now in this case, you have both of dad's on the left side and both of mom's on the right side, whereas before it was, you know, kind of mixed up. And so this is a new lineup. And so what do we get at the end? Well, you get a new combination. And so, and remember, this, these are going to be sperm cells or egg cells. And so, depending on what you get, or which uh, sperm you know was was the one that made you, you either got one of these different types of uh, information or, or or genes. And so that's basically what it is. Von of Independent Assortment says that they can line up in any way, and it gets very complex. This is just four. Imagine forty-six or twenty-three pairs. And imagine all the different uh, com complex arrangements, depending on how they line up. So again, here they, they line up like that. And here's the law of segregation. It's just uh, pretty simple. The law of segregation just says that once they're lined up, then they separate. So of course, uh, blue's going to go that way, yellow's going to go that way, right? You see them end up in that sex cell. And then yellow and, and blue are going to go that way. And, and then they're going to split again for meiosis part two. And then you get these kind of gametes. So law of segregation just means separation, that the the pairs line up and then they separate. So that's in, separation is an anaphase. So law of segregation is an anaphase. And then the final thing that creates variety is fertilization. Why is that important? Well, you have complete uh, different instructions from mom, and they're going to mix with uh, complete different instructions from dad, and those are two different um, organisms. Um, and then you have a new new child. So you get the best of mom, best of dad, and so you're going to have all these new genes. So those are the four. Just remember those four things that cause variety. Remember crossing over, a lot of independent assortment. You can get all these different uh, ways to line up the chromosomes. The third one is law of segregation. Is, um, they're going to separate. And so the mom and dad, homologous pairs, uh, they separate and go to different cells. And the fourth thing that causes variety is fertilization because, again, you have... Dad with complete different instructions uh, fertilize the egg with complete different instructions, and so now you're going to get a new different child that's unique. Now let's talk about non just Sometimes, chromosomes do not separate properly during cell division. This is called non-disjunction. It can happen in both males and females. Non-disjunction causes gametes to have an abnormal number of chromosomes. Here, you see non-disjunction happen during meiosis one as a pair of homologous chromosomes fails to separate properly. This may cause a zygote to receive too few or too many chromosomes. Here, you see non-disjunction happen during meiosis II, as a pair of chromatids fails to separate properly. This may also cause a zygote to receive the wrong number of chromosomes. The zygote formed here has three of one kind of chromosome. This is called trisomy. The zygote formed here has only one copy of a particular chromosome. This is called monosomy. Most offspring that receive an abnormal number of chromosomes die before birth. Okay, so non-disjunction. This is what causes those uh, syndromes that we talked about in class, like uh, Edwards syndrome, you know, um, Down syndrome, Klinefelter's, you know, and those sorts, or Turner syndrome. So now, hope that hopefully that helped. Um, make some comments and uh, online and I'll see how I could further help you. Take care and good luck with your cell division project.